Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Melissa here and I'm really excited to show you guys how exactly I made this faux marble resin Himalayan wreath plaque. If you guys want to try to make this at home, I did list out all of the materials that I used down below in the description. And I also separated this video into separate parts because it's pretty long and in case you want to go back or skip ahead, feel free to check the description below because I timestamped each section. And of course, before we get started, make sure that you're subscribing and also give a girl a thumbs up and feel free to comment, let me know what you think and let me know if you have any questions. I'll definitely try my best to get back to you. The first thing that I did here was make the Hameli wreath. I used 98 of these brass tubes. Each one is 100 millimeters with a three millimeter opening, 22 gauge brass wire, wire cutters, round nose pliers, and a tape measure. To start, I'm pulling out 14 of these brass tubes and I'm gonna measure out all of the wire that I need. Now you're gonna see me right here measure out 60 inches, but that is wrong. So if you're gonna make this using 100 millimeter straws like I'm using, you need to use at least 72 inches. Now I'm taking one end of my wire and I'm gonna thread four of these brass tubes through it. I'm gonna bend the wire so my four brass tubes form this diamond shape. Then I'm gonna twist the ends of the wire together and use my round nose pliers to help me secure it so it's really tight. Now I'm grabbing the end of my wire and I'm gonna put another brass tube through it. Well, I'm gonna put the wire through the brass tube is what I really wanna say. And when we get to the end here, you can use that tube to cover up that little twisty part of the wire so that way it's not showing. Then I'm going to grab another tube and put it right through to meet with the other tube. Now I'm taking this down and I'm going to bend it down to form another side to my diamond. And I'm going to twist around to tighten the wire to make sure it's nice and tight. I'm grabbing the other end of the wire again and I'm going to proceed with two more of these brass tubes and do the same exact thing. Bring it all the way down and then bends to make another side to my diamond and twist it around nice and tight. And finally, we're gonna do it one last time. Two more brass tubes. All the way down, bend it around and tie it tight. Now I'm going to grab the end of my wire again and I'm going to thread it through one of these tubes. It does not matter which one, you just want to thread it through so that way it comes out of that midpoint. Once you have that wire through that midpoint of one of your legs, we're going to once again add another tube and this time we're going to connect all of these points. So I'm going to go ahead and keep stringing through these tubes until I have four sides connected. And again, I'm twisting it around to finish it off and what you're left with is this Pentagon looking Pac-Man. Everything that I just did, I did six more times to get a total of seven of these Pentagon shaped Pac-Mans. Now I'm putting together all seven pieces to create the shape of the wreath so we can have a visual. As you can see, I already put a couple of the pieces together, but I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So you're gonna take two pieces and to connect them, you're gonna take the wire and put it right through the backside of one of the pieces. And then to connect it, well, first you're gonna twist the wire around to tighten it, and then you're gonna string that wire through the top tube, as you see here. Then you're gonna end up with a piece of wire that's sticking out of the top. And what you're gonna do is just give it one last twist, because remember, you wanna make sure that you're keeping the whole structure nice and tight and secure. And then you can go ahead and place it through the adjacent tube, and just use your pliers to help you tighten it and clean up those corners. Now at this point, I can go ahead and connect all of my pieces and finish my wreath. But I just want to show you guys how I went about this when I realized that the wire that I cut was way too short and it's not long enough to connect to the other piece. What I did was just cut some extra wire and use my pliers to twist it on. And there you go, it's elongated. Now the good thing is that twisty piece is going to hide right underneath the tube when I pull it through. 
and pretty much I go on and connect it the same exact way that I did before. Through the top, giving it a nice little twist to tighten. I'm gonna trim the excess and then use my pliers to push the wire through the adjacent tube. Clean up those corners. And that's it. Connect all of the sides and you have a Hameli wreath. Now it's time to make the faux marble resin clock face. For this, I'm gonna use a 10 inch canvas and I'm just gonna flip it around and tape the back so when I pour the resin on and it drips to the back side, I can easily take it off by removing the tape. I got some handy dandy little risers that I'm gonna use to elevate my canvas and I'm gonna make sure that it's level before I even do anything else. I got my art resin. If you're dabbling with resin and you have no idea what brand to use, I highly recommend this brand. I find it's really, really good. So I'm mixing equal parts of the resin with equal parts of the hardener and I highly suggest that if you're gonna be mixing resin that you use a scale like you see me using here because the scale is so much more accurate and it's so much more easier to use than trying to use measuring cups. So I'm pretty much just making a bunch of clear resin right now and I'm gonna use the clear to separate later into different cups so that way I can create all the different colors that I want for my marble. My marble clock face is going to be like gray and white, so for sure I'm going to need some white pigment. So I'm mixing in some white epoxy pigment. And then I have this shading gray. It's like an acrylic colorant that I'm mixing in. And then I'm going to add in some white to it so it's more of an opaque gray color. I'm going to pour a little more clear in a cup and use that to make a different color black. I'm using the Pinata Black Alcohol Ink. And again, I'm going to add a little bit of white to it so that way it's a little more opaque. Alright, so I'm going to start off by pouring on a bunch of clear and then adding in some white right on top of it. And I'm busting out my heat gun to kind of blend those colors together and push the resin over the edges so it pours over the edges of my clock face. Now I find using a heat gun, it's like really, really easy to get carried away with the heat gun. So at some point you gotta stop yourself. All right, so I'm taking some of my light shading gray and attempting to just do some freehand lines across it to create that marble effect. Now I'm gonna take some of my darker black and go over it with some more of these um, little strokes or lines. My intention here is to make it look dimensional by using two different color blacks. Um, so I'm using my heat gun again to blend in these lines and smooth them out a little bit, make them look a little more natural. But I'm really not feeling the way that the black, the darker black that I made with the alcohol ink looks here. I find that it's more of a cool black and I really like the look of like that warmer gray. So I thought to myself, let me make some darker gray by just using a really high amount of that shading gray to make a really dark gray. And let me add these strokes in here to kind of see if it will disguise some of that blue black. And then I'm just taking in some white to add alongside of my black lines to kind of give it a little more dimension to it and a little more depth. And then coming in again with my heat gun to smooth out these lines to make them look a little more natural. So I'm blending and I'm blending and I'm blending and I'm thinking to myself after all of this work and all of this resin, I don't like it. This is not how I imagined my clock to be. I imagined it to be like a light, pretty gray marble. This looks absolutely like nothing that I'm envisioning. So I'm taking my heat gun and I'm blowing away as much of this resin as I possibly can. These things happen sometimes, guys. Sometimes... Things don't always turn out the way that they're supposed to, but don't settle and don't give up. There's always a way, there's always a solution. If at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again. That's exactly what I'm about to do right now. So now I'm taking the clear like how I did in the step one and pouring it over and then putting my white right directly over it. Then I'm gonna take my heat gun and just try to smooth it out like a lot, as much as possible. 
just so I can have like a new surface to kind of create my marble strokes with. And I like the look of this. I think this is gonna look much better. Let's get back in there with the shade in gray. This time I'm just gonna stick to my light gray. I'm not gonna go overboard with all these different shades of black. And I'm definitely not gonna do black black. I'm just gonna stick with this beautiful, warm, light gray color. And I'm gonna blend it in nicely with my heat gun, make it look nice and natural. I'm taking my white again and aligning it right next to my gray strokes to give them a little bit of a highlight. Smoothing out with my heat gun again, blending everything in nice. And finessing my strokes again with the shading gray. And also add a little more lines to this area that was looking a little blank. I'm already liking this a lot better than before. It's much more closer to my vision of like a nice, pretty gray marble. It's been a full 24 hours and my resin is cured. So now I'm gonna add another layer of just clear over the top. And I'm using my fingers um, with a glove on, of course, to spread and smooth out the resin over the whole surface. And as you can see, that layer of clear really helps mellow and soften all of those lines that are creating that marble effect. And it just overall makes the whole thing look really soft and really pretty. I wanted to give it just a little bit more dimension, so I mixed a little bit of white resin and I'm just adding some more white in next to my gray strokes. And then of course I'm using my heat gun to blend and to pop any leftover bubbles. My plan for the Roman numerals is to create a stencil and paint them on. I'm starting with the eight and a half by 11 size artboard in Adobe Illustrator, and then I'm gonna create a 10 inch circle to represent my resin clock face. Now I'm creating a seven sided polygon called a heptagon that I'm gonna center over my 10 inch circle, and this is gonna represent the placement of my Hameli wreath. I'm typing out my Roman numerals. I'm only gonna be using the 12, the three, the six, and the nine on my clock. I'm resizing them, and I'm putting them in the font that I like. I'm creating another circle that I'm going to center in between my heptagon. This circle is going to help me better align my numbers and make sure that they're in the right placement. I'm also just making little ticks in between each number to represent the numbers in between the 3, the 6, and the 9. And I think I prefer my numbers to be straight up and down, so I turned all of them. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to print this baby out. Got the print, cutting it out. I'm aligning it to make sure it fits, put my wreath over it, make sure everything looks good, flawless. I got the cutting mat out and I got my stencil ready to go, but first I'm gonna cover up all of my numbers with some shipping tape. This way it's gonna help prevent the paper from ripping when I start to cut it, especially in those little tight areas where the Roman numerals are really tight next to each other. Long story short, I went through all of these numbers and cut them out with the X-Acto knife. I'm not gonna go through and show you guys every single part, mainly because my big head was blocking most of the footage, but that's because I had to get really, really close to see what I was doing. I wanted to be really precise and really careful because I wanted the stencil to come out perfect. I'm taping on my stencil to my resin clock face to get it nice and secure and then I'm getting out some black acrylic paint and I'm going to use a sponge to sponge on my black paint onto my Roman numeral stencil. The reason why I wanted to go for the sponge was because I kind of want that worn out look to the clock and also I know that the sponge is going to hide any defects in the cutting. I know for sure because it was such tiny areas that the cuts are not 100% perfect so the sponge is really going to do a good job of masking that. Time for the big reveal. I'm really, really, really hoping that it looks really good under there. So let's get this tape off and see what we got. Woo! It looks so good. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see this thing finished. Let's move on. 
The next order of business is attaching our Hameli wreath that we made in part one to our beautiful new faux marble resin clock face. This was actually the easiest part of this whole entire process. As you guys see here, I'm spreading on a fresh layer of some clear resin. This is going to be my last coat of resin, so I want to make sure that it's perfect. I'm making sure I get it nice and even, and I'm making sure that I get a nice coat along all of my edges. Once I got it good and covered, I got my heat gun and I'm popping all those remaining bubbles. The blowtorch is further helping me pop those stubborn bubbles and then I'm also using this little tool that's helping to get out some of this dust and debris that fell in while I was working. Once my surface is satisfyingly smooth, I'm gonna take my Hameli wreath and carefully, carefully place it on top of the wet resin. I have to be so precise that once again, my head is blocking the camera. The main thing is that the wreath is placed evenly around the Roman numerals. It's time to turn this thing into a functioning clock, pun 100% intended. <laughs> All right, the first thing I'm doing is flipping it over and I took the tape off already and I also marked a dot in the center of the circle. And I have my drill and I actually started off with a really small drill bit, but then I soon realized that the hole needs to be much bigger in order for the clock part to fit into it. So I switched to a much bigger drill bit and I finally got the hole the size that it needed to be. I'm attaching the battery pack through the back of the clock and pretty much um, I'm just reading the directions that came with these clock parts. I got them right on Amazon and they come with easy instructions. It's really straightforward. Now I'm attaching the clock cans. I wanted these fancy little clock cans for my clock <laughs> and turning it around to put the battery in and folks we got ourselves a functioning clock. Look at that. 